And we're live. Welcome, everybody, to the Lakers Lounge. I'm Anthony Irwin of Lakers Daily, joined by Raj Chapalu. The plan is for Raj to come on the show, or the plan um, going into these playoffs, I was really excited that Raj, like, you know, is, is down to do all of these post-game shows. So that's the good news, right? Is that like Raj is going to be doing the, the doing these shows, uh, you know, with me live after all of these playoff games. The bad news is that there's only going to be three more of them. Stop, stop. Th the Lakers stop. tonight had Anthony Davis match uh, match Nikola Jokic's uh, production. Went toe to toe with him. Um, there was a stretch there where I thought AD kind of checked out a little bit. I think that was kind of that was just a brutal stretch where he taught he shot a couple of those three pointers and stuff and. And look, like, I don't want to. I I, I want to be absolutely clear. The Lakers lost this game because of D'Angelo Russell, and we'll talk about him here in a second. But um, when you look at the difference between like the Lakers beating the Nuggets in uh, 2020 and now losing nine straight to the Nuggets, the major difference there between those stretches of games is that in 2020. Anthony Davis was a great three point shooter in that series. And, you know, that part of his game is now kind of gone. Um, but yeah, like I said, this game was on D'Angelo Russell. Um, this game was also on, I, I, I thought Darvin Ham, I thought he did a really poor job in this game, uh, second half. Um, and while Denver made their run, I didn't think he did enough to kind of organize things. Um, I thought, LeBron pretty clearly tuckered out, which was kind of crazy to see. Uh, I thought his legs kind of gave out on him, but like, it's funny, Raj. I I went into this one. I didn't have I didn't have a great feeling going into the series. I sure. predicted that the Nuggets were going to win in six, and that was giving the Lakers enough credit to go out there and win a couple games. But um, this is like a demoralizing loss. Like this, this, this loss, this loss hurts a lot more than I anticipated this loss would, would hurt. Are you feeling mm -hmm. the same way? And if so, why? Like, where do you think that is coming from? I think where that comes from is number one, the expectations and our process, Anthony was excellent in the first half. Everything you like, I remember both of us when we were doing the Denver preview with Sabrina, I think my main point was, look, last year, if you, if you go rewatch those games, which I did, it was really our stars unable to match theirs. That was really what it was. That's what it came down to, even with the struggles of Darvin Ham and D'Angelo Russell being, um, put it nicely, removed from the series by Bruce Brown. Like, it came down to our stars not being good enough. I thought tonight they were. You, you talked about AD kind of finished slow and LeBron got tired. I think the demoralizing part is AD looked like the best player in the world tonight. He was going up mano y mano with the guy who's actually the best player in the world, and he played him even or even outplayed him, depending on who you ask. Jamal Murray had a terrible shooting night. Um, he was cold for most of this game. I thought LeBron at least outplayed him. You had two of the three best players in this game, putting Jokic, splitting Jokic in the middle there. I think that's why it hurts. This feels like a very much missed opportunity to me. You were up 12 going into the half, and I, I remember I was on playback live. And I said, you have to close this half out strong. You can't get nothing for this half. And LeBron's three had a little bit of a shot of a shot to the arm. But by that time, Denver was rolling. And the thing that I'm most disappointed about is Denver punched back and we completely adjusted. We started with Rui on Jokic and we can get to the details later, but Rui was on Jokic and I thought he did a fine job. Jokic was like 11 for 16 at one point um, and scoring well, but I thought we at least had their their offense shut off in its movement. Um, but we stopped scoring, and then you brought up D'Lo. I'm shocked. I mean, you were preparing me for this, as were other people were. <laughs> I I have I have a little bit more of a, like, belief in of a re redemptive arc, I guess, in terms of just how players work, and usually it's guys because are... you don't watch movies. Normally, you get that belief from, like, watching movies. It always <laughs> sure. happens in movies. It doesn't happen in real life. No, it doesn't no. tend to happen in real life. It, like that's the kind of shit that you see in this. Like there's like really inspiring music behind it while the redemption is is actually taking place. Um, <laughs> there was there was no inspiring music during. No, this game. there there wasn't. Nothing was playing. But the shocking part to me, I can live. So 
like obviously I have I have a lot more grace for players, which is obvious to anyone listening to the show. But like I can live with a cold shooting night. I can live with playing not playing well. I can't live with chucking shots. And there was a point in this game. I think it was in the second quarter. D'Lo shot an air ball, and we were like still up by six or seven. And I made a mental note of that. Like D'Lo is not a guy who shoots air, air balls. And it was clear the crowd was starting to get to him. Denver was starting to get to him, and you could see him continue to just get more and more lost in his own head where he forgot he was on the court playing a playoff game um before the half he had a turnover coming, coming up the court throwing it nonchalantly to uh i forgot who it was and it got turned over and mpj hit a three on the other end it's just i think that's why it's so disappointing and why we have the tone that we do right now because it just feels like you pl- you played your best hand and then the nuggets had a joker no pun intended like they just they you know they had a card that you could not beat um and I think that's why it feels so demoralizing. You you took you you use your best shot. Denver really didn't throw their best shot. Jamal Murray still in the cards here. MPJ had a really quiet first quarter and really second half. KCP didn't turn up until the second half either. Had four threes I think in the second half. It's just I feel like we played a really good game and you still like this game was close technically, but it wasn't really. After the half, you were really like you got outscored thirty two to eighteen in the third quarter. Um, that which includes a 10 0 run to close the second half to the second quarter. So this game wasn't as close as even the, the final score indicates. I think that's why it, it, it feels so sad right now. Um, I'm going to, this is like, this is where it's tough. Like, obviously look, I'm not saying that my job is tough. Like I'm not, I'm not working construction in 116 degree weather or anything like that this job is like a dream gig. Don't absolutely do not get me wrong here, but um, this is where it's it like our gig or my gig can be kind of frustrating because um, I think I, I think I, like Raj, I think you watch a ton of non Lakers basketball because you love basketball. Sure. I watch so much non Lakers basketball. Because like back in the day, I hosted a national show, right? I hosted Locked On NBA weekly, and I've like like that those habits that were ingrained in me never went away. Because I think there's so much value in seeing what, the, the other, what other teams are doing, right? Like seeing seeing where the Lakers need to get, depending on the goals that you have set for this Lakers team, right? When when you have LeBron James, you have Anthony Davis. The goal is championships. That's how you that's how you measure yourself, right? Um, sure. And, and like, that's why I hold the Lakers to such high account. That's why I have such high expectations of the Lakers is because I know what, like, I know what they're, what they're going for on a night by night basis, right. Or a season by season basis. And, and like, when I, when I was like as angry as I was at the deadline that the Lakers didn't do anything and didn't trade D'Angelo Russell, it's because I've seen D'Angelo Russell play in the playoffs everywhere that he has gone. By the yeah. time that 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 team gets eliminated, he is not on the court in important moments because he's not a playoff player. He isn't, you know. And and like I hate. By the way, I <laughs> when when D'Lo was drafted by the Lakers, I had to like I was I was a, I was considered a stand, right? Like I like <laughs> it's funny how long that like you know how how these things kind of turn. Um, D'Lo is a really, really fun player when he has it going and he is like absolutely enthralling when his shot is falling. Right. Um, but he's also like absolutely useless when he, when he plays poorly and tonight, like in order to be as bad as he is defensively, right. We always talk about this. You have to be incredible offensively. And so Mm -hmm. tonight when he was devastating offensively for the Lakers um, and then he's also not great defensively that becomes, that's why like when, when you look at like the, the 16 win players, right. That's what the, or the 16 game players, right. What makes those players like stand out in those, in those games is that they have really high floors and also really high ceilings. But their floor is super duper high, right? You you and 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 like with D'Lo, his floor is in fucking Tartarus. Like his floor is so far down there, 
And tonight, it was really clear that that like Darvin does not want to lose D'Angelo Russell again in the series. Like it, it was really clear tonight that they were going to do whatever Absolutely. they possibly could to make sure that D'Angelo Russell is not lost in this series, or or if he is going to be lost, it wasn't going to be as early as it took place last last year, because it was really evident last year that uh, that 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 D'Lo was not going to work in that series, and it took a little while, like you said. There, there's it, it's for decent reason that it took so long to bench him, but eventually you had to bench him. And tonight, sure. I, I I I thought that they should have benched him. They should like I don't care if you lose him. If if D'Lo is so mentally weak that you get lost by being benched on a night that you played this poorly, then he you shouldn't be in the fucking rotation. Like you should he shouldn't factor into your expectations going into a series. It drove me insane these last few days when people were like, "Well, D'Lo has to play better than he did last year." No, he doesn't. He doesn't have to play better. We saw it just now. He doesn't and have to play better. But, but the bar was in hell. Like. The bar, I tweeted it in the first quarter today. D'Lo had three baskets in the first quarter. He had a mid-range jumper. He had two layups. That was his average from last. Like, that's how easy it is to get to his average. I said he already reached his average in the in the first quarter. Um, Just really quick on your trade deadline point that you were making there. The thing is, and I get it. Like, I think there's a middle ground there where you can bench D'Lo in a way where it's not disrespectful to the player. Right, like we talked about the Brandon Ingram stuff. Look, Brandon Ingram got benched in the fourth quarter. That's one thing. It's another thing to start a whole another player to start a second half. Right? There's a way you can there's a way you can bench a player without embarrassing him. The whole point, Anthony, we got two guards back. We got Spencer Dinwiddie and Gabe Vincent post trade deadline. That's the whole point of those two guards being on the team. I've said it all year, and the Lakers have been kind of shy about this, but I'm not. They are DeAngelo Russell insurance. That's just what they were. There was no reason to play D'Lo 40 minutes tonight. I don't know what we were proving. I don't know what we were trying to get going. Maybe Darwin was trying to get D'Lo some momentum going into game two. I don't know what it was. It's very clear he was very disengaged mentally, that, and that's just a character attribute that he has in these type of games for some reason. Um, but that's the whole, that's to me, that's the whole point here, is that we had two players that could have replaced him that were honestly playing better than him, at least defensively. They were contributing in other ways. Gabe, I don't think, took a shot tonight. Dinwiddie, I think maybe took one or two shots. I, I don't, I don't have the box score in front of me, but like D'Lo playing forty minutes is like that was just unnecessary and uh, inexcusable to me. So it just, well, it, and it's also forty minutes of high usage minutes, right? Like it was, oh. he he had the ball in his hands so goddamn much, and like like you know, I I walked out of the out, out of the um, so we were doing playback for the second half, right? We were on all access Lakers for the second half, and by the way, this this loss is on me. Because a, I was wearing a jersey at the beginning of the game, but I didn't wear, I didn't want to wear a jersey on All Access Lakers. I don't want to be that guy. Um, Why not? <laughs> huh? Why not? I, I just like I don't, I don't need those memes. Um, and then like, like, did you see the 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 image that I put on on YouTube? One of like the thumbnails on YouTube because like you can't control thumbnails really on 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 shorts mm -hmm. on YouTube shorts, and it's me like kind of looking up into the sky, <laughs> and I have because mm -hmm. I had a. I had a, uh, God, what is it called? It's like a minor stroke, like a really, really a TIA uh, when I was in high school. And so I have, mm -hmm. a, I have a lazy eye as a result of it, right? So I'm like looking this way. My two eyes are looking this. It's just like, it's a disgusting picture. So I'm like, that's enough memeage. I don't need any mm -hmm. more memes of okay. me today. So I decided not to wear jersey or jersey on the, on the air. Um, but like, uh, I, we, we're, we're on the air there. And when we're talking amongst each, uh, amongst each other, it's really easy to get like sucked into that conversation and not really uh, like lose sight of everything else that's going on um, that is not in the conversation that we're having. Mm -hmm. And so I walk, I, 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 you know, Jen is in our bedroom and she's kind of getting ready for bed and, and, and she was watching the game too. And she's like, yeah, they were saying that Austin was really quiet in this one. And I'm mm -hmm. like, it didn't really dawn on me that he was quiet because he just had no opportunity. It was sure. play after play after play after play, whether it was the Lakers calling it to get D'Lo going or D'Lo calling his own number so that he could stay engaged. But it was play after play after play after play, and it was empty possession after empty possession. And I know, like BK from um, Locked On is 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 you know was was saying to me today or just now, you know they they aren't empty possessions if they're good shots. I'm like they aren't good shots. He was going one-on-one yeah. -on -one against Aaron Gordon in one of those. The three that, like, ended the game. 
ended it. Any chance that the Lakers had basically was like a motion sidestep three. Trying to draw two foul. guys guarding him, you know, when he's trying to guard a or, you know, draw that foul that isn't going to be rewarded in, in that spot, you know? No. And, and that ended the game, the Lakers, I think at that point were down by down six seven. or eight or whatever. Yeah. And, and like, you, you know, you have like a glimmer of hope there that you could maybe make this thing a game, maybe cover, you know, <laughs> something like that. But no, like he takes that shot. Uh, Denver comes on. I think KCP makes a three and that's it. Yep. Games back yep. up to a 10 point game and the game is over. Yeah. And, and again, like, I know that these like Darvin Ham is probably going to say these series or marathons or something like that, whatever fucking idiom he's going to, he's going to use like uh, at the end of the day here, the Lakers basically like wasted a game in which Anthony Davis went toe to toe with the best player in the world. You got a bad shooting night from Jamal Murray. Uh, Aaron Gordon was in foul trouble early. Peyton Watson was in foul trouble early. You had everything go in your direction in the second half. You had everything you could possibly ask for, realistically speaking. And and you lost it by double digits because your point guard short circuits in every tough series, in yeah. every tough setting. It always yeah. fucking happens. And that's why, like, I know people are saying, like, well, it, the Lakers couldn't find a deal that was worth it for, De for D'Angelo Russell. You just need him off your roster. That's it. Like he's, he's, he's a negative presence on your roster. Yeah. The longer that you, the, the, the more likely it is that you play a good team in the playoffs. D'Lo can't play in those series. That's been the case his entire career. Yeah. That that's so tough. And I know I told you this on playback and you and Rome and you guys like, it doesn't matter. Like I, like I know that I understand that he had an awesome regular season, which no one wants to hear right now. But the whole point of that is that again, you have replacements for him. Like there's yeah. no reason that makes it so play. much worse. <laughs> that, like, like, you a, don't just have Spencer Dinwiddie in this series. Yeah, yeah. you also have you have Gabe or, Vincent who yeah. honestly played. You had Gabe Vincent who played well tonight. I thought Gabe Vincent did a nice job on Jamal Murray. I thought he chased him around ball screens. Jamal Murray's gonna hit contested twos and contested threes, but there are places where you, if you just want defensive subs, you can. Anthony, you bench Rui tonight, like. Like you bench Rui Hachimura, who had oh four God. shots. Yeah, we'll talk about I that. think we'll we'll get into that in a little bit, but like that's my point here is that you had subs for him. Now the sub for him was Torian Prince. So like I guess that's an easier sub for Darvin. I just want to go with there's there's two moments in this game. The first play of the first half. Coaches always say that, and if you hear coaches speak, they always say the game's a flow sport, right? Really, the plays that you call are out of timeouts in the first play of a half or first play of the quarter. Those are really where coaches really get to diagram a play out of a timeout. First play of the first half is D'Lo on a switch against Aaron Gordon. I think you mentioned it. One-on-one, -on -one, dribbles through his legs twice, step back, mid-range. I'm like, and D'Lo's like one for six or seven at this point. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. And the other one is what you're talking about. Down seven, we forget. It's coming out of a timeout. We come out of a yeah. timeout from this you play. LeBron in the corner. And I, so we ran out. D'Lo brings it up. LeBron runs to the corner. And I'm, I can't wait to rewatch this game. Not for those reasons, but like to just go back and look at uh, yeah. LeBron's face at this moment because we come up, AD sets a screen on the left side. I, I don't remember. I think it was Torin who set a screen on the right. D'Lo decides to just go off one of the picks, and he thinks he has someone on his back, and he fires a three in no rhythm. And like you're, like you said, uh, MPJ comes down and hits a three on the other end and ends the game. It's just you look at the box score, and it's so tough. I hate singling out singling out one player for a game because like a game is long. And there's a lot of like multitude of like reasonings why you lose. D'Lo six for twenty. I think just stands out like a sore thumb when you look at Austin's attempts, Rui's attempts, AD and LeBron. I don't even think touched D'Lo's shot attempts. It's just like if Dar I, I don't know. Darwin's trying to win. Like what's the saying? Like lose the battle to win the war. It's just. This is not a long war. Like you don't have many battles left. You only have to me, you have two battles left in this war to if you have a chance to win. And um, I thought you needed to take this one. So really just dis really disappointing, really disheartening. Uh you get another shot at it Monday, which is nice. Only one day off. But um, yeah, those Delos possessions, Anthony, so perplexing, especially when you have other guys who are playing well that you trusted. Dinwiddie's closed over Delo in games. Gabe is, I don't think Gabe has yet, but Dinwiddie has in the regular season. It's just it's it it, it sucks that um Darwin went with this uh and went with this well, it was it was it was such a refrain back to some really bad habits right there because you know at the beginning of the season the starting five like basically the Lakers lost that game with 
the starting five from the beginning of the season on the floor, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you had D'Lo, Austin, Torrey, and LeBron and AD out there in that fourth period where like a run was kind of made, you get back kind of close to it. And the whole time that they're on this run or they're like just kind of fighting to stay like close, um, the whole time they're there, it's like, just take D'Lo out. Take D'Lo out, put Rui in there, and you can have Austin, uh, Torian. Like LeBron should be should have the ball late in the fourth quarter anyway. Like you don't need D'Lo's creation, especially if every like the only thing he's creating is opportunities for himself that he's he's blowing right, missing layups. You you mentioned the the air ball. There was also a a, a dead ball situation where the Lakers were shooting. If you're looking at the TV screen, they were shooting on the left side of the court. And D'Lo gets the ball, you know, maybe it's like three, four feet behind the three point line. And, you know, he, he, he fires up a three there and it, and it catches the front of the rim. And, um, if you see a player, like if a a well-rested player miss short, it's a confidence thing. Like if they miss short consistently, they, it's a confidence thing. They're aiming the ball, right? That's, that's how that goes. And, and, you know, he, air, the, the air ball that he had tonight, right. Was short. It was not, it was not a confident air ball. It was, it was like, it was a, one of those shots where he like barely does the follow through or anything like that. And, um, like, I don't know, man, like I, I, you know, we have a comment here from David, um, saying, you know, what are you talking about? We can't win without D'Lo. He sucked tonight, but who was better? David, you're better. Like, like, like it, it, the Lakers, like Raj is saying, the Lakers have options. The whole reason that you brought in, you brought in Spencer Dinwiddie and you, and, and you, Raj, you, they tried so hard to get Gabe up to speed. He didn't play in the second half. So like yeah. those, those, those games that they were kind of like, you know, were either closer than they needed to be, or they lost because, you know, Gabe goes out there and, and isn't scoring, but you're being patient with them because you're trying to get him up to speed for the playoffs and for Jamal Murray. Um, like that was all for, that was all for not. That was a waste of time. That was a waste of everybody's time. Cause he didn't play in the second half while D'Angelo Russell was playing a terrible game. I, I just want to clarify really quickly on something. I, I, so with David's point, I do think that Gabe Benson and Dinwiddie are replacement options, especially late in games for D'Lo. I've said this many times here and other places. There's no winning this series without D'Lo being competent. It just doesn't, it doesn't exist no. to me. D'Lo's average 18 points. Again, I know no one cares about regular season numbers, but my point is what the team has relied on getting to this point and how they're going to beat a team with the, yeah, with the tools that they have. Points. He has 18 points a game on 42% from three, Anthony, on like good volume from three. He's really our only high volume three-point shooter. He doesn't have to be a great shooter every night. He also can't be a zero, though. And he also can't chuck when he's not hitting. Like that, Those are three things that really destroy us and put us in a hole. So there's no, like, yes, there's other options, and you can sub in Gabe, and you can play Rui and play bigger. There's no winning this series if D'Lo is just terrible and all, you know, all five, six game, whatever, you know, the series. That was part of the math that everybody was doing when they were predicting that the Lakers could make this, you know. Like, I I was texting back and forth with Pete today. Mm -hmm. Um and and uh you know we we put our beef aside our temporary beef you know we we put it to the side to talk about the series um and and we were you know we were texting back and forth and he and and he made the point that a lot of other people were making was like Delo can't be as bad as he was last year you know he has to play better than he did last year that, that, like he has to be capable of being better than he was in last year's series and it's like i does he like like does he have to be like is that a, is, is that a choice because <laughs> like you know he, he chose differently tonight and and yeah. again like i don't like saying this about a guy that like i've 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 wanted to i've i i legitimately do root for d'angelo russell right i really like all the stuff that he says about being a father like that stuff is so cool to me how like having a kid recenters you and all the stuff and and it you know, realigns your priorities in a way that like, you know, you're playing basketball. And at the end of the day, it's easier to play basketball when you know, when you get home, that there's going to be this kid who doesn't give a shit about whether or not like his kids tonight have no idea that he played really poorly. And that's like really centering stuff, right? If I have a really, really bad show or something like that, when I wake up in the morning, my son is going to be like screaming at me, daddy, 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 car, 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 car. And like, it's a, that that's like that's life stuff that like him 
him contextualizing that and speaking to it is legitimately really cool. I've really been rooting for D'Angelo Russell to figure things out this year to make up for it, to have that redemption arc from last year's uh, series. The problem is, like... This is this is how it goes with D'Angelo Russell in the playoffs. Like I had I had Wolves fans saying, "Oh yeah, it must be must be April. D'Lo needs to be benched." I had uh, Brooklyn Nets fans saying, "Yep, yeah, I, we we we've, we've been here before. We've experienced this too." Uh, I don't think he was on the playoffs on the Warriors. I think they were just terrible that year. Where, where, where yeah, they were out? awful. Yeah, yeah, they never they weren't even close. Um, they got the number two pick. Came yeah, oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good good pick good pick um but but like i i just i uh you know at the end of the day you know this this isn't a series that the lakers can just like take losses and battles to win the war because what this means you lose game one this is why i told aaron last week you need to win game one because if you don't now the lakers have to win game two you don't win this series if you go oh, down yeah. 0 and then after that, you have to take care of business at home because you don't want to give home court advantage back to Denver. So that means a team that has beat you now nine straight times, you have to win three straight games against because you lost this one. And this yeah. one was right there for the taking. You had a double digit lead. You had Anthony Davis playing the way that he did tonight. Honestly, I was I was I was hoping for more from LeBron in the second half. I know that I know on on playback there was uh, you guys were a little bit more patient with him. I, I I didn't like his shot selection. He didn't spend nearly as much time in the post as I thought he needed to. You got Aaron Gordon in foul trouble, and then that you didn't do anything with it. Um, you know, after he came back into the game, you just kind of let him live with the two fouls that he had or whatever. Um, and and you know Jamal Murray shot poorly. Like this was. This game was there for the taking. You had it. You had it right there. Yeah. I was like thinking they were up by 12. I almost texted Adam the most Denver Nuggets Lakers thing, historically speaking, <laughs> that could happen is for the Lakers to break the streak in game one of, of, yeah. a, play, of a playoff series. Like that's how, because historically the Lakers have owned the Nuggets, right? Like Nuggets fans will tell you they hate the Lakers because the Lakers have owned them forever um, yeah. until recently. And, and, and yet like you lose this one and you lose it. I like what hurts is that look, Denver's great. Denver's the best team in the league. I think they're going to win the championship, but you lost this one. And it feels like you lost it because of errors that you made. Right. Right. It feels like the Lakers lost this one. Like they cost themselves this game by sticking with the Angela Russell a little too long by yeah, going yeah. away from offense. Um, Tim, uh, Tim from uh, Lakers Exceptionalism, right? He does a good job of, of mapping out uh, their organized offense. In quarter one, when the Lakers built their lead, they ran set plays 67% of their possessions. In quarter mm -hmm. two, they ran set plays 55% of their possessions. It's lower, and that was when Denver got back into the game. And then in uh, Q3, Q4, 45% and 39% respectively as the game was being lost. And it yeah. was just, it was, it was, you know, a return to bad habits going like going with this freelancing offense that has been terrible all season. You, you, you go back to that starting group at the beginning of the year. That was a disaster. Whenever they were on the court together, the whole reason that you thought that the Lakers would have a better chance in this series is because you figured that Rui would play a bigger role in it earlier. No, nope, he gets benched. And you go back to D'Lo, Austin, and Torian um, yeah. as your as your one, two, and three out there, and and yeah, like you make all of these, you, you keep shooting yourself in the foot often enough, your foot's gonna fall off, and you just <laughs> and, and, and like it, it's just you you just kind of and and you can't do that. Like Matt, you, you're fighting a grizzly, and you start by blowing off your foot. Like it, it's just it's just <laughs> you're not gonna win. It's hard to win. Yeah, you, you you're not gonna win if you're if you're making these self imposed. You're taking these. You're taking these self-imposed losses. Yeah, it, it's funny because, like, with D'Lo last year, right? We we basically got two extremes so far. Still a long series, but we got two extremes, right? Last year we got D'Lo really just disengaging and just not shooting at all, and he just decided not to do anything and be extremely passive. And then you got tonight where he said, "Oh shoot, last year or last time I was super passive, so this time I need to keep shooting. I need to yeah. I need to show that my aggressiveness is there." 
And it's like, I'm not sure which is worse. Honestly, <laughs> I'm like, I'm thinking of the two evils and they're both just evil. So like a deal needs to find a middle ground. And you talked about all the parenting stuff and deal is a very highly in tech, like intellectual dude. You could tell he speaks basketball that way. You could tell him and AD have a just basketball connection that you could tell on their podcast. So it's interesting that he goes this way with LeBron. I thought Anthony, he just, People don't want to hear this, but LeBron just has only so many times he could dip into that tank and pull out. Like, yeah. you know, and I thought he did in that first half. Right to right to start the game, it was attacking the basket, attacking the basket, attacking the basket every time. And it's easy for me, you, and whoever is sitting and watching this, being like, hey, LeBron, keep attacking the rim. That wears him down. That is tiring to keep driving into Jokic, right, driving into Aaron Gordon, driving into even MPJ. And I think he just decided I'm like, I'm not going to waste that. We're down 15. If we make a run, we make a run. I'm not saying LeBron threw the game in any case. I just I think he made a calculated decision that he does to manage that game in a way where he has you know legs left in the tank um, for Monday. So that's why I think he stopped the, the running plays with. I just it's so frustrating because we were. I thought we had to be very precise in how we run our offense. And the sad part, Anthony, is we did. We mismatch hunted correctly. We picked on Jamal Murray. Uh, we picked on Peyton Watson when he was on the floor. We picked on Christian Brown when he was defending LeBron in second units. We did a really good job offensively. Like our offensive process was really nice in that first half. I thought even our offense, like our defensive process was good. Jokic was cooking. I think he was like eight for 10 or whatever on Rui, but I liked the shots that we forced him into and how we kind of shut everyone else's water off. No one else was really getting a shot. Jamal Murray was struggling. I think a lot of that was because we kind of forced Jamal Murray to consistently hit the pocket to, to Jokic. And then we had AD come over and help in a way that I thought was uh, constructive. It's just, yo, Denver threw a punch, man. And, you know, D'Lo went into a shell and then the whole team kind of broke from that. I, I don't know how you, how you saw that. I, I don't think benching D'Lo is the answer either, either. Like you can't start Gabe in game two. Like that's D'Lo's too important for what they need. Uh, there's just not enough talent on this team for, D'Lo to give you nothing, um, and and you win. So I, they're in a tough place, in a rough place. Um, but they're gonna have to answer in game two. And good thing it's a, it's only a one day rest. So we'll, we'll see on on Saturday or on Monday. Yeah, I, man, um, I, I do want to spend some time here giving Ed his flowers because, uh, sure. that was like, I, and look again, he had that stretch that was pretty frustrating. Or whatever, where he started shooting threes. Um, and I think there are things that Jokic takes advantage. Like Jokic, you can see like when, when AD is below the top of the, um, the, uh, restricted area, when he gets, when he, when he gets below, like closer to the baseline than the top of the restricted area, um, watch Jokic, like see that he's there because mm -hmm. if Jokic sees that he has a step on ad going down the other way he flies right like he really makes it a point to yep. stick his hand out there you know get out run stick his hand out there like a receiver when they know they have a step on their on their db like he really gets out there and goes and there was a play tonight um it was in the second half where uh ad I think, uh, oh, it was, remember it was uh, AD missed the layup that we thought he got fouled on. Then LeBron missed the layup. And mm -hmm. then there was kind of a, a fight for the ball. And the Nuggets wound up getting the ball. And they go out there and they score. And AD yep. like barely crosses half court, right? So like there were some frustrating aspects of this game. But all like more important than like, because again, the reason the Lakers lost this one is because of D'Angelo Russell. Like, I'm sorry. It, it just is, you know. <laughs> Um, you, you can't have somebody that, uh, you know, like who, who takes that much off of the table without putting much on it. But AD, I thought tonight, like he was getting the ball and going into Jokic's chest on offense. Right. Um, he was shooting the mid range jumper with confidence. Um, he shot the threes. Um, I thought he kind of fell in love with it for a little bit there. Um, but you do still, I, I, I like when AD fires up a couple threes cause it means that he's confident enough to go out there and get that shot up. Sure. Um, like, and then, and then defensively, you know, I, the one thing that I would say the, the one issue that, that like with the Lakers game plan of Rui guarding Jokic 
is like if you're gonna have AD as kind of your wrecking ball, and you mm-hmm. know, in 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 a weak side defense and 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 help side defense, um, he needs to be that. And I don't think like with the way that Denver moves the ball and the way that they involve Aaron Gordon, because like you would think Aaron Gordon isn't a shooting threat, so AD can kind of ignore him. But Gordon is so good at you know floating along that baseline and making those baseline cuts that AD can't really ignore him. So, like, I do kind of wonder if the Lakers are actually going to go to playing Jokic a little bit more straight up, um, th- you know, uh, with AD on him than having Rui do it. Because, um, like, tonight I thought that Ham benched Rui for not being able to guard Jokic, which is just like, say that out loud, Raj. Like, Darvin <laughs> Ham benched Rui Hachimura right. because he at 6'8, six, 6'9, six, what is he like 250 right yeah 230 or Something so like that. um like couldn't guard Nikola Jokic at seven foot seven one 300 pounds and that's why Darvin Ham goes away from Rui altogether down the, the stretch of the game while it was still kind of a game um I you know you, you can't again and it's been consistent with Darvin all year that he always looks at Rui and holds against him what Rui can't do rather than acknowledge the things that Rui can. And, and, uh, yeah. but yeah, I thought I was really impressed with the way that AD played tonight. Yeah. It sucks to lose the game that AD plays that way. Uh, yeah, it is just right before I get to AD, I just want to give, there's a point before the end of the first half where we're obviously reeling, right? Crowd's going ballistic. Um, it's going absurd. Delo's lost himself during this moment, but awesome. Um, Rui comes down and, I think Denver ties it, Anthony, and it's like a 10 0 run. Yeah. No one wants the basketball at this point. You could tell. Like, no one wants any part of anything. Everyone's nervous. Rui catches it on the wing, jab step, pull up jumper, clean. And whatever happens in this series, and I know whatever happened, like that, that impressed me a lot. Like, that, that's, that's a huge shot. And look, Rui only shot five times, but. That shows me a lot in terms of his makeup, and then on the and then again, um, Austin also came down. Again, crowd going ballistic. I think Denver took the lead, or or, or maybe tied it. Came down and hit a mid range pull up as well. So I wanted to give those guys at least some credit trying to stop the run when it was already kind of you were getting run over. But no, I thought AD was great. Um, my whole like complaints from last year was I thought his offense wasn't good enough, as unfair as that may be for his defensive ask. Uh, but when you're the you know best uh, or the you know star franchise uh contract maker like you have some ass that are unfair he's got a score in this series anthony especially in single coverage against Jokic. like Jokic doesn't foul he gets back he's never gonna block your shot ad can take his time get to his spots the threes were kind of when the game was already out of hand i thought we were already down double digits and the pick and pops were there so ad was kind of firing these low um low usage threes where he can kind of uh save his body but i know his game was awesome i think him and Jokic had a like he played him pretty even or even outplayed him to an extent. I loved his attacks to the rim. I loved the floaters. He was getting no calls, which I would love some kind of investigation to that. Um, even with the free throw disparity, I think the Lakers had 17 to six free throws, but they were, at, they were able to be extremely physical with AD bunch of shots that should have been out ones. I thought his cutting was good. I thought the ball screen with LeBron, this was the best LeBron AD pick and roll game we've had in a while, especially against Denver, just leveraging that against them. You talked about the Aaron Gordon stuff. That was really on the boards um, where Jokic and Gordon really did a number where AD was the only one rebounding. Again, LeBron, Austin, D'Lo, Rui, especially just don't box out enough against a team like this. Um, so like, I thought at least AD did his job there. It's just, it's tough. You outplay the best player in the world and your team doesn't, you know, come along for the ride. I, I, I don't know how, like, you go into game two with that, but AD was awesome. I thought he was great. He came over for help side as much as he could. He switched on to Jamal Murray in cases. He was coming out, you know, switching on to MPJ. He was getting to the rim. He was protecting the rim from Jokic as much as he could. It's just wasn't enough. I don't, like, his, his offense wasn't enough, and his, and his defense was enough to, to put them over the top, but he did his, he did his job, I guess. It's just it, it's tough in this context to try to give – all the flowers I could um, because you eventually did lose in double digits. Uh, But 80 was, 80 was really good. He played his role and it's all you can ask. If LeBron 80 do their job, then you can kind of look around the roster over the summer and they did their job in in game one. 
Yeah, I think I think the big lessons to take out of this one is you have Gabe and Spencer for a reason. So if Dilo is playing like that, you don't need to play him 40 minutes. And then the other big one here is like you can't you can't hold it against Rui that he can't guard Jokic. That is such horseshit, you know, like and and I don't know if that's the reason or whatever, but but Rui gets benched. What did Rui play tonight? He played uh like 29 minutes. Man. 20, he, <laughs> 29 minutes. It's just uh so Rui um looking at so we played 31. He Rui oh, 31. played 31 okay. minutes. Um Hayes played four minutes, which seems kind of low. Um honestly, I you, you know you want to know what the 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 um most important stat is from this game. Hmm. DeAndre Jordan was only minus three. Oh god. Like like the, he and and I think he's only a minus three because of some like late game stuff, you know. Um, cause he was a plus for big chunks of the game. And if Deandre Jordan is a plus Deandre Jordan only plays when Nikola Jokic is on the floor is on the bench. Yeah, that's it. And, uh, I'm sorry, you guys can, I hope you guys can't hear the rain. Um, but, uh, <laughs> the, you know, I'm, I'm going to go stand out at stand. I'm going to go stand out in it after this show, just going to stand out there yeah. and, and do the full on like rom-com sad scene thing but mm. um but yeah like the the Rui stuff and Rui only getting four field goal attempts he shot four times in this one he it's just... um he shot two free throws and uh like he was huge for the lakers last season he was the reason that the like when he started game four when he started playing more he's like okay well this this makes the lakers a little bit more competitive and he just doesn't factor into this game. Um, and, what? you know, again, it's just like I, I thought the Lakers got really out of sorts. And and well, I think Rui well, really needs stuff drawn up for him, and, he, and and it just didn't happen. I'll say one reasoning what it could be, and I give Rui a ton of credit for this because um, taking the challenge of Jokic, right? Like, I'm sure that's yeah. not something he really wants. Like, I'm sure when Darwin's like, hey, you're guarding Jokic from tip-off. And I was shocked at that, honestly. Like, that's what I – like hope would happen. I was shocked they went to that right away, but that could wear you down as well, right? Guarding Jokic isn't just guarding him when he has the ball. It's fighting through a million cross screens that they set, right? Every single time in the paint, a guard's coming and setting, and Denver sets real screens. Like they um, they set really hard picks on anyone that's coming through, and Rui has to get through those. I'm not saying that's the reason he shot four times, but I think that could be a reason. Him and Austin, right? Austin has a Jamal Murray matchup as well like they have austin pretty much chasing jamal murray around so maybe that's one thing that tires them out the thing with look, darvin benching Rui because he can't guard Jokic, we're doing the thing where we double Jokic on like his second dribble and i think Jokic started to realize that <laughs> like i think as the game yeah. got on he's like taking Jokic, two dribbles on purpose yeah it, right, exactly yeah. yeah so it, it worked in the first half and we built a 12 point lead which you should have been able to but leverage that's what Jokic that. does though like yeah. For you, sure. You can't throw the same pitch over and over and over again at, at, at Nikola Jokic. No, 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 I know. Like, but like your 90, however, this baseball analogy works, like your 90 miles per hour fastball was working enough to get you a four run lead or whatever it is. Like, you should be able to leverage that at least into the fourth quarter. And um, they weren't able to. The, the Nuggets cut a 12 point lead to three in like two minutes, which is just too quick. It's too fast. But yeah, we're like doubling Jokic here and there. And again, I thought our rotations, Anthony, were crisp um Peyton Watson came in and hit two threes right away which was extremely demoralized like that that sucks like your your defensive yeah, process hurts. to let that guy shoot he's shooting I think like 28 percent from three hits two threes right away but our discipline continued we continued to let that guy open and we dared him to shoot um where it switched was when Jokic kept scoring in the post Jokic kind of realized that I gotta go quick and Rui can't block my shot so I'm gonna have hook shot after hook shot after hook shot I would have loved if we just continued the game plan a little bit longer and trust our offense, but we switch AD onto Jokic and something about switching AD onto Jokic, Anthony, just like, this is not just for this game. This is a series question I had going into it as well. Something about putting AD on Jokic and Jokic piercing that, like that being their point of attack to our offense destroys our whole defensive identity. Like, Jokic going directly at our best defensive player and scoring through him just kills our whole defense. There's like, there's no, we have no um, adjustment to that. Uh, and we need one, I think, because AD's going to have to guard Jokic one on one 
for a lot of the series. Um, but yeah, the Rui thing is very strange. Four shots when he was actually shooting well, when he has mismatches that he can take advantage of, you can have Rui screen and ISO him against Jamal Murray, ISO him against KCP. There are advantages. Even MPJ is a guy that Rui can bully through, and we never went to that well. We just kept going to the D yeah. the D-Lo one, and there was no water coming out of it. So um, yeah, it's it's it, it's tough that he got he got benched. In the I want to play a quick game here, Raj. You you want to humor me on this one? Let's We're gonna it. I'm gonna I'm gonna list players who played fewer minutes than D'Angelo Russell <laughs> okay. on, on either team. Are you ready? All right, let's do it. Austin Reeves played fewer minutes than D'Angelo Russell. He played 37 minutes. D'Angelo Russell played 41 minutes. Okay. Um Aaron Gordon, foul trouble. He plays 32 minutes to D'Angelo Russell's 41 minutes. You kind of get that one. Um Jamal Murray played fewer minutes in this one than D'Angelo Russell. He played 39 minutes. Uh D'Angelo Russell played 41. Nikola Jokic played. <laughs> Played fewer minutes than D'Angelo Russell. D'Angelo Russell clearly didn't have it in this one, and he just kept on playing, right? The only two players who played more than D'Angelo Russell in this one, or as much or more, um, were Anthony Davis, who played 45 minutes. Fucking, what a grown man. 45, game. wow. From from AD, 45 minutes from, from Anthony Davis, and LeBron played 41 minutes. D'Angelo Russell played 41. Um, that's just that's inexcusable. Like I, I know people, I, I, I know people are hoping that like playoff Darvin ham is a thing, but 41 minutes. For, <laughs> and it's just like, you, you can't, you can't. Um, I, I want to, a couple quick things here uh, before we get everybody out of here. Um, the, the Lakers obviously only have one game of, or one day of rest before uh, Monday's game. Um, and I, I would imagine Murray isn't going to go, isn't going to go nine of 24 again. Um, no, he's not. KCP went four of 11 in this one. It felt like he shot a lot better than that, but four of 11 for KCP isn't great. Right. Um, Michael Porter jr. A pretty average game for MPJ, right? 19 points, eight boards. Uh, he was huge, though, in the run. The run coming yeah. back in that first half, he was he was huge. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is that, like, MPJ, I, I said this to Adam. I said this to Ryan when, when we were getting ready for the series. MPJ is very much like D'Lo, where, like, if MPJ has it going, they you do not beat Denver. Like, when MPJ has it going, they're yep. probably on a run um, or they are blowing you out. And uh, D'Lo is like that too, right? When D'Lo scores like, set, you know, whatever it is, 20 or more points, the Lakers have some really good record. Um, and, and uh, you know, MPJ, you know, got it going eventually. And and I thought that was a big kind of swing moment when, when MPJ joined the fray. Um, like, is there, is there any optimism that you can draw from this game and in, in hopes for like, you're, you're, you're the more optimistic person than I am. I think the Lakers are getting swept again. But, oh God. Um, but like, you know, it is that's a long summer. Ooh. Yeah. But if, if uh, like, is there, what, what are you looking for in game two? Uh, yeah. So I guess the op, like, just if I put on my optimistic glasses, which aren't hard to find, right? They're on my table, so I can I really quickly can grab I feel them. Like you but, wear, uh, I feel like you wear optimistic uh contacts. Like they're yeah, just always exactly. Yeah. That's the way I, I look at I look at life. But no, like honestly, again, this is I don't I'm gonna put it this way, Anthony. You're gonna hate me for this, so I'm sorry. Might want to just mute this part, but there's no way D Lo can be worse. Like there's gotta be a, a way that he he plays. <laughs> I do it. I do, I do, I do it. Why? Uh, <laughs> but no, in, in in like in all seriousness, seriousness though, like LeBron and AD did play a really good game. LeBron and AD have a LeBron and AD have real advantage. You, <laughs> I, I knew that would elicit that response. Um, but no, like uh, LeBron and AD actually have real advantages to me in this series that extend past game one like they have a way that if they attack the basket there's no one really to stop them and Aaron Gordon is in foul trouble and I think that has to be something the Lakers really uh push towards um getting him in that foul trouble because I think that changes just the uh the geometry of the floor for us because they have no one else that can guard LeBron uh, and I think those are things that really can transfer into game two like those 
I don't know why we just stopped running sets when they're working uh, so consistently, but that's another thing that I hope to do more of. Like when we run the LeBron and AD pick and roll there, just make them defend it, make them force us to change it, make us like stop scoring before we stop it. I thought like, usually you can't switch Anthony versus a lot of teams. I mean, you can't run the LeBron AD pick and roll against a lot of teams, right? Because a lot of teams just switch that action. The Nuggets don't switch that action. They don't switch Jokic on the LeBron very often. That's a that's a that's an action that you can really leverage to your favor to get good shots. Um, and I think that's a way that you can go into game two. It's just uh, there's a level of intensity and there's a bar that the Denver Nuggets push the intensity to. That if you're not matching that, um, you can't play. But those are my optimistic looks. Like the LeBron and AD look like they're ready for this series, and they have advantages that they didn't have last year maybe just towards health like maybe just being healthier maybe just having a different you know not being tired from two series right not having two series under their belt before playing denver um i think rui hachimura has a huge margin to contribute to like he he was basically non-existent offensively for um multitude of reasons and austin reeves i, I believe can also be better he didn't shoot well from three i thought he got to his mid-range a little bit but wasn't the austin reeves that we expect that's been playing well um, and maybe guarding Jamal Murray is just a, I remember when Austin was guarding Steph and he talked about on a podcast, how that really destroyed his legs where he couldn't really score. And he found them later in the series. We're going to need Austin's legs um, going into game two, but that's my positive take. Like, I, I don't know what else they could do. And like, this is our team. These are the punches we have. And we threw them. Some landed and you were making the 300 movie like thing where, you know, uh, he was bleeding. Denver was bleeding a little bit and, and they put a bandaid on and like, and ran, ran over us, but they did bleed. There was blood coming out. I saw it. It was red, just like ours. No, we bled out. I, I mean, say, they bled the out on the floor. They've gone but... on runs against Denver. They've held leads against Denver. Like in order to make the Denver, the Denver Nuggets actually bleed to like live win. up to the, the move. You have to win. Okay. Like it, this, it, it, okay. Just to, I, I know again, people are gonna kill me for this. This felt different, like even in the previous games versus Denver. I, I like it never felt like LeBron and AD at least got to a level that was matching Jokic and Murray, in, like in a process standpoint. Some of them, sometimes it's LeBron being hot from three, sometimes AD's jumpers going. That's not what tonight was. Tonight was they were consistently getting to, to the basket, and I think they were winning their matchups and advantage, like they were winning their matchups in a way that I thought was real and has real like process stuff that um we could take but no you're right like i don't think denver is going into game two like oh man um you know we really almost lost game one like i don't i don't think they're going into game two feeling that way but um i mean that's my optimistic take the real take is you better fight like hell to win game two because if not this series over and um yeah my countdown to summer league starts pretty soon here so that would be a uh, <laughs> very very sad um, before we go, I gotta, I gotta go through our super comments, which we have a, a few of them. So, uh, I, you know what? I'm not going to play the sounder. I can't even do like <laughs> fuck Boston. I, I can't, um, Justin Tyndall writes, uh, Braun and AD can match, uh, Joker Murray, but Dilo Austin Rui against KCP, uh, MPJ and Gordon is a mismatch. Rui needs to rebound the damn ball. Three boards in 31 minutes. Gordon MPJ, 19 boards combined. Plus, we have no bench. Um, that's what makes Denver special, right? Is that they have guys who like if like even when even when Murray wasn't doing anything in terms of scoring, I thought he played solid defense and I, I thought he did good stuff rebounding the ball. They also like um Mike Malone is a hard ass. Like he's like he's you know, he is really difficult to please. Um and that means that he like he is hyper focused on the minor details and all of those things. And I just think that um, Denver is is a lot more disciplined when it comes to the fundamentals of the game and having core principles. Right. You don't see too many. Wasted, empty possessions, right? Like, you don't. um Peyton Watson comes into the game and he shoots three pointers, but they're wide open. I dare you to shoot three pointers, right? Nobody Sorry. guarding him whatsoever. Uh, you don't see, you know, Christian Brown go in ISO against anybody, right? They're, they're just like, they're, they're so much more disciplined and they have such a better understanding of what they need to do to be successful. And, and, you know, you watch the Lakers 
and like you have Tori and Prince dribbling four, five, six times to get to the basket. You have uh, it's just like it, it, there, there, there are no core principles to what the Lakers are trying to accomplish um, if they aren't running a set. That's why there's such a difference between the Lakers' productivity when they're running a set versus when they aren't is because their principles are completely lacking. Yeah, it's funny because we have release valves where we have release valve players, right? Like Rui's a release valve player. End of the shot clock, we give it to him. He takes a mid-range pull-up. Uh, LeBron's a release valve player just because he's on the ball. Denver has release valve sets, which makes things so impossible, right? So the shot clock, yeah. Anthony, will go down to like six seconds. And I noticed this too when like you watched the series from last year. Shot clock will go down to six seconds. They'll somehow fit a Murray Jokic pick and roll into that. And everybody just knows exactly what to do on the floor when that happens. Like, okay, if the tag comes this way, I cut here. And and I remember uh, one play tonight, the shot clock go, got down to like five or six. They got an Aaron Gordon dunk out of it. And LeBron's looking like, who's my help? Who's behind me? But it happens so quickly that like it's tough to kind of m m navigate your defense that way. I think the rebounding point is extremely important, though. Like, I understand that's what Gordon and PJ do. Rui needs to box out every time. There is no leak out against this team. There just is. There's just yeah. not LeBron too. Every single time you got to box out Aaron Gordon. That's that's like an ass. That's that's a must. And that's all Aaron Gordon's the in there for. And go get the ball. But and also D'Lo and Austin have to gain rebound. They have to crash. They have to come down. You're not really getting insane transition opportunities against this team. Aaron Gordon sprints like like hell back. They are extremely disciplined in transition. Like you're not getting very much baskets in that way. You got to rebound the ball. So the rebounding point uh point to me is is, is um extremely important. That's what Aaron Gordon's in there for. He's not in there to spot up. When he's taking threes, that's when Denver has you in my opinion. That's when they they feel super comfortable. They feel so um, comfortable that Aaron Gordon shoots. So um, uh, Justin yeah. Tindall, actually, like this is a great stat. This is like a really telling stat on the rebounding front. Justin, again, uh, saying offensive rebounds were 15 to six. Braun was our second leading rebounder with six. Jamal Murray had six rebounds. Uh, nobody beating, uh, nobody's be beating Denver four out of the next five. Next game is a, is a game seven. Um, yeah, like that, that's just. And the thing with like the thing with the offensive rebounds, especially offensive rebounds being five, 15 to six, Denver is a better offense than the Lakers. Like, I don't know if that's the mm. case statistically. I don't know like where the two teams wound up at the end of the year or whatever, but Denver has the best player in the world and he is a, he is the best floor raiser in the world uh, for the players around him. He makes that, that offense run in, in a way that the Lakers doesn't run consistently and if you're giving that team extra possessions by way of offensive rebound, that's just, it's killer, you know? And, and uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think the Lakers will win a game um, if, that they don't out rebound the Denver Nuggets, especially offensively like offensive rebounds. If it's that big of a gap between, you know, 15 to six, um, then it's just, it's just, it's just over. You're, you're dead in the water. Yeah, we need to sandwich rebound a lot, right? Like sandwiches when you have uh, uh if Jokers if Jokers are getting boxed out by Rui, there needs to be someone behind him as well, right? Like yeah, God bless Rui, and I thought Rui at least tried to box out Jokic as much as he could. Jokic can just tip the ball over him, and Jokic might like I don't watch volleyball, but Jokic I think is one of the best volleyball players in the league. He just tips yeah. the ball to himself and and throws it up. So like the guards have to rebound and as much as they can. I thought there were some plays where. Denver was allowed physicality on the boards and we didn't get the call, but that just has to be a point of emphasis um, going into game two. Uh, Marley asks a question. Um, do we pull the plug on D'Lo quicker than game four? I think it's necessary. Darwin's post game comments doesn't seem like he's concerned about it though. Dar Darwin's post game conference comments are always really stupid, but um, yeah. Do you pull the plug on D'Lo? I mean, what does that mean? He like, I think first, the first, first the, the first half in this next game is about as much rope as I'm, or leash or leeway as I'm willing to give D'Angelo Russell. If he plays poorly in that first half, I think you, you start Gabe in game three and you go away wow. from D'Lo completely. I, he's not a playoff player, man. We've known this. Like, uh, like yeah, it's, it's, it, this is, this is how it always goes with him. And, you brought in uh, Spencer Dinwiddie. You spot in. You brought in Gabe. Um, those guys, at least because they try defensively, have that bit you know a, a higher floor than D'Lo. 
and they aren't going to hurt you as much as D'Lo can hurt you. Um, I think if D'Lo plays poorly in the first half of this next game, he doesn't start the second half, and you don't see him hardly at all for the rest of the series. I, I'm, I'm done fucking around with this guy. I'm done. Yeah, I can't. I yeah. can't. I I can't keep watching D'Angelo Russell. Like, I, I I can't sit there and hope that this guy raises his game in ways that he's clearly incapable of, ra- of raising his game. What sucks because I'm I'm bring I'm just gonna bring his game into this because I like what sucks about it is obviously I've always said his variance is gonna be very high, very high because number one, D'Lo doesn't get at the rim. Number two, he doesn't get to the line, right? So that puts that puts everything on your jump shot working, right? And yeah, in playoff game, in playoff defense, plate teams are tighter to you. They're more um, engaged. It's tougher to get open looks. And that's why D'Lo is gonna struggle. The part to me is the just intensity. And like that's something that D'Lo can control. He can't control his jump shot going in every time. I get that. He can control his shot selection. Number one, he, number two, he can control his intensity. It's a tight game. It was like a three point game. He's walking up the floor, um, and that throws just through the KCP. Yeah, stole was just it was a lazy like lollipop pass, bounce pass yeah. thing that KCP Lou just trotted up and took. Yeah, no, and D'Lo was like skipping up the court, right? And I, and um, the broadcast even brought it up, which and they were saying LeBron was very he was stern pissed. with how, with Did how you he. See it? Did I you didn't see get that? to see it. I'll go. I'll go rewatch it. Oh no, my I didn't god, get to see it. it was a little bit uh, fuzzy um, during that time, but yeah, like that's the stuff to me which is disappointing. It's and this is part of D'Lo's game, right? He's a very like uh, you talk about. He's a vibes guy. Like he, he, you can really tell when he doesn't have his moxie, he doesn't have his swagger, but. Um, there's ways you got to impact the game, man. If you're going to be a 30 minute player, which I think Delo is going to be like as much as he, we want to cut his minutes, he's going to be at least a 25 to 30 minute player at the minimum. Like dude's got to contribute. Denver's too freaking good to play a guy who's being removed offensively. They just are like, and, and the gap between Dinwiddie and Gabe currently and Delo in, in terms of just offensive talent and production and ceiling, it's a large gap, Anthony, that Gabe can't make up with his health and Dinwiddie is just not that guy offensively right now it's just i think you lose you just lose delos this if delos this bad in the playoffs you're going home in a week but that was i i I can't i'm not cool with that you brought in you brought in gabe you brought in vincent so that like you 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 don't just lose when delo is this bad you know um i here's the thing that i'm a little nervous about raj Mm. Because like I, I maybe maybe I was uh two in the moment while I was watching this. And I, I, I apologize, Brian, if you're watching right now, I'm not picking on you. But Brian Kamenitsky made the point that like he likes it when Delo stays aggressive and he thought that Delo was I've, taking I've, the shots that were I've that seen were, that. I've seen people um, say that that were that that he was being given. Here's what scares me. What if Denver's giving him those qu- those shots because they know that he's a mental midget? And he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna choke in the spot, yeah. right? Like we've all we've all played we've all played pickup, right? Anybody who is who's watching or listening or whatever who has played basketball, and 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 there's always that dude who's shooting these shots, and he's like, "I'm open." It's like, why do you think you're open? Yeah, you know. What if yeah. that's the case here with D'Lo? What if Mike they're like Malone, talking to him too? They're like, "Hey, hey, like you're open, us, like shoot it, us. self check, yeah. self check, yep. right?" Yep. Like, uh, what do you do there? Because if that's part of their game plan here to leave D'Angelo Russell, uh, open, if that's like, if that's how this is going to go, if that's their intent. And he's taking these shots, and it and it goes like it it it, it plays into their game plan then that makes it even more destructive that you're running sets for the guy. They were running sets for him. They were like trying to get him going throughout this game. And, and Mike Malone's just sitting there like, keep going. He's never going to make it. He's never going to, it's never going to happen for this guy. Cause it, it yeah. might not. Yeah. It's that that's rough. I, maybe I'm just, you know, trying to believe this just cause it helps me sleep at night. But I just repeat, <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, <laughs> I I refuse to believe those are set plays for D'Angelo Russell to get jump shots. Like I, I think those are our base set principles and we run actions out. Like I, there's no way Anthony, I don't want to live in a universe where I believe this, where we came out of a timeout and said, we're going to stick LeBron in the corner. 
um and have D'Lo take a pull up three. there's no there's no way there's no way that that there's Dude. no way that's the play call out of the timeout there's I no sat, I sat there I sat there like like this I think for minutes yeah like, I, I don't remember. know how long yeah. I don't think I moved there were like eight I don't plays think... after that that you didn't see you and I <laughs> you, you and I you and I both like just sat there dumbfounded because you're on a run move. and that's the shot that gets drawn up it's just yeah and he's too and D is also too smart for this as well, right? This is very like we, we say this all the time. D is a very intelligent player and not just intelligent on the court. Yeah, he's a very aware guy of the league and uh a lot of things that surround the league that some players aren't. He knows, like he knows those aren't good shots for him. Uh Darvin Ham came out in the post game. I I listened to Darvin say that I told him to stay aggressive, and maybe he did. This isn't the game to test that. And it's clear LeBron and AD were extremely annoyed with it. Yeah. Um so yeah. On to on to well, game two. Yep. On to game two indeed. Uh we have as it stands right now, thirty eight hundred people watching right now. That's a new record. That's that's the most ever. Um uh watching live. To those of you who are new to the show, please do hit that subscribe button. Please do hit that uh like button as well. If you're watching on Twitter, head on over to youtube.com slash at Lakers Lounge to subscribe to the show. So you guys can sit here and, and uh, either celebrate or commiserate with us, what it would, depending on the night. Um, like the Lakers play again Monday night. Again, the plan here for the rest of the playoffs, whether that's three games or however many games, uh, Raj is going to be here uh, with me, breaking that down in the lounge. Make sure you guys follow Raj on Twitter, where he is going to, I would imagine, uh, be putting together a thread as he rewatches this game. Um, yep. I personally am going to pour a really tall glass of wine um, and go and sit throw the out game the on the TV. Yeah. No, throw the, no, no. Well, okay. Here's the thing. I finished fallout and I finished Shogun. Like I'm all caught up on Shogun. So I don't really have anything I can watch right now. So which I'm, I'm, I really might just go sit out on my back patio and watch a fire. Like that, that's it. That, that might be what I do. I saw something today. Um, they were doing the Jokic was compared to uh, what's his name um, in that movie, like the the, the movie character that they're Guru Guru, Guru? or something. Oh yeah, Guru. there's Despicable four Despicable movie. movies. Like how, mm -hmm. that's that's insane to me. Like how they're did all they, really I, good too. Like they I, haven't really fallen off. So I haven't seen a, I haven't seen a single one. I just wondering like how they made four movies out of like minions and that guy. Like it's. It's impressive to me. I thought it was going to be like number two or something. I was like, oh, they have a new Despicable movie. And it said like number four next to it. I'm like, number four. And where have I, where have I, where have <laughs> well, I, I wonder, because like there's also like the, the rise of Gru and stuff like that. I don't know if that is counted in the list because there might actually be more than four. But oh, they have side uh, movies too. Oh my God. Huh? They have side yeah, movies. Like too of and, the yeah. There's the Minions movies and yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm not gonna watch him. But got a cool comment here from a Nuggets fan. Uh, this is from Justin uh, Land. Good luck with the series, fellas. This is a good show. Sincerely, a Nuggets fan. I appreciate it. Um, if you guys haven't checked them out already, make sure you guys do tune into the uh, conversations that I had with Adam and with Ryan in prep for the series. Right, a lot of the stuff that they said came to fruition here tonight um, in this game and. Probably going to continue con <laughs> coming to fruition <laughs> over the next three. Um, but yeah, until uh, we'll shoot tomorrow is Sunday, which means I will be right back here to, um, you know, kind of react to the reaction and then look across the league at, at how the rest of the playoffs are going. It'll be a mailbag show. So if you guys have any questions, send them in the form of a five star review to iTunes and I'll answer them there. Um, and, and, and maybe we'll watch a little bit of playoff basketball here in the lounge together tomorrow. Um, but until then, and until the next time you guys hear from us, I'm Anthony Irwin. That was Raj Chapalu saying, have a great rest of your day, make somebody else's, and we will talk to you on well, Sunday tomorrow. God.